Christian Church up in Spokane. A couple days ago, we uh, went back and visited one of our own stomping grounds, a lovely place they formerly called Chop in Seattle. And you know what's funny is things really went viral when, in a, in, for us in America, you know, that whole place, the chop zone in Seattle, Antifa had taken it over and they had blocked out any police presence. They burned the precinct. There were people getting stabbed and shot. It was just every night they were clashing. And I remember watching it on the news and the Lord said, yeah, I want you to go bring worship there. I said, I said, Lord, I love Seattle, but there's some, there's some better places we could probably go. And he said, no, no, there's powers and principalities that think they own that area, and they don't. And so um, I started calling around and <laughs> couldn't find any. I mean, here we are. I mean, I'm a worship leader at a mega church, and we're singing all these songs called Slaying Giants and Letting the Walls Come being a slave to fear, and yet I can't find anybody to go with me to chop. <laughs> 2020 was like a season where you found out if, you're, if you really mean what you sing with your song. So anyway, I was calling around, couldn't find anybody, and couldn't find anyone with sound gear, couldn't find anyone to, to help us do anything, and then all of a sudden I met some Russians. Some of the sound guys that are with us tonight. I never knew them from anywhere. They just were like, you want to worship and chop? Let's go. And uh, <laughs> I said, why do you want to go with us? You know, I said, you know, you don't even know me. Like, why do you want to go? And they said, well, we, we don't want to let the place where we live look like the land that we fled. Come on, somebody. That's a word. That's a word. So they showed up, and of course we showed up, and you know Antifa showed up, and they unplugged our stuff, and they were trying to tackle our drum set. They sprayed super glue all over our keyboard and unplugged our our uh, our generator, but the worship never stopped. And sometimes, here, let this be a word for you. Sometimes, if you don't quit, you win. And they realized we weren't a bunch of soft Christians that were going to be pushed around. 3,000 of us showed up, and we worshiped for hours and hours and hours and hours. My favorite part of that whole situation, and this is what I want to declare for Spokane, is that there was so much joy. Like, it wasn't like, and this is the new school way to do warfare. Smile. I used to think when I was a worship leader, the more, like, constipated your face looked, the more intense your praise was. I was like, ooh, they're really getting breakthrough. They look like they're hurting and pain. Yeah, they're really breaking through. Then the Lord was like, no, no, no. He who sits in the heavens laughs. So we show up and chop. We're smiling. They don't understand why we're, we're not getting angry. We're not meeting their angry spirit. And sure enough, the main live streaming guy from Antifa jumps up behind us and chop, and he starts live streaming on the Antifa channel. Tens of thousands of people are watching it, and he goes, and I'm not going to say the words because he used a lot of profanity, but he said, I don't get these blankety blank Christians. He said, the more angry we get, the more we try to mess them up, the more joyful they become. He said, they won't stop. Sure enough, that night, we had a couple members of Antifa give their life to Jesus. See, the devil's a liar. And he's not as hardcore as he tries to make himself be. I want to sing this song called Take Joy. Turn to someone and say, Take Joy. Because joy is our weapon. 
You want to break through the heaviness of the Pacific Northwest? Joy. You want to break through depression? Joy. You want to break through suicide? Joy. You want to break through darkness? Joy, 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 joy. No more grumpy Christians. <laughs> I'm going to teach you this part of this bridge. It goes like this. There's a joy deep down that I can't shut up. No force of hell can hold me up. A fire inside going to light it up. It's joy. Take joy. There's a joy deep down that I can't shut up. No force of hell can hold me up. A fire inside going to light it up. It's joy. Take joy. Now, hold on real quick. When you get to the take joy, you got to be super annoying. Like, it's joy. Take joy. Like that annoying person at church, you know, that's always happy. Yeah, be like them. There's a joy deep down that I can't shut up. No force of hell can hold me up. A fire inside going to light it up. It's joy. There we go. Take joy. There's a joy deep <laughs> Force of hell can hold me up. A fire inside gonna light it up. It's joy. Take joy. Look for a depressed person. One more time. Find someone depressed around you. Gonna light it up. No fire inside gonna light it up. It's joy. Take joy. There's a joy deep down that I can't shut up. No force of hell can hold me up. A fire inside gonna light it up. It's joy. Take joy. There we go. All right, we're ready now.
broken. I just believe right now, all across this place, depression is going to be broken. I believe spirits of suicide are going to be broken. Spokane, Washington, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. The garment of praise. Praise, 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 praise.
like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battle. This is how. And I know that when I was a boy walking the streets of this city. You had intercessors praying. Intercessors were praying that one day there may be a move of God's Spirit. Come on, raise your hand if you've been praying over this region. Raise your hand if you've been praying over this city. Come on, just begin to pray. Come on, just begin to lift up those prayers again. Come on, with faith. Come on, with faith. That this is the hour. This is the hour. This is the time. Could this be the hour? Could this be the season? Could this be the generation, God? Could this be the generation, God? We say revival generation. We say revival generation. I don't care what you see in the media. I don't care the statistics they read. I don't care what they say about Generation Z. Last night in Seattle, we had 5,000 people. We had 1,000 people at the altar. We had Generation Z throwing up drugs, cocaine, marijuana, pornography. There is freedom in the name of Jesus. And so if you believe for a revival in this generation, I want you to lift up your hands. Come on, I want you to sing this speech and say, Oh, pour it out. We say, 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 pour it out.
say pour it out You say pour it out You say pour it out Oh You say pour it out You say pour it out You say pour it out In fire and wind, come and do it again Open up the gates, let heaven on in Come rest on us Come rest on us Fire and wind, come and do it again Open up the gates, let heaven on in Come rest on us Come rest on us you know, songs like this, they carry a different meaning when you go into cities and regions where there's a revival history. Some of y'all maybe don't know the revival history of this region, but people all over the world used to fly into this little town to get healed. This was known as the healing epicenter of planet Earth. No wonder why the enemies tried to come in with darkness and suicide and depression. Because there's a mantle, there's a calling on this region, amen? So sing that with me. In fire and wind, come and do it again. Open up the gates, let heaven on in. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. In fire and wind, come and do it again. Open up the gates, let heaven on in. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Sing this with me. 
Just lift your hands, sing that with me. Come on, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come rest on us. You're all we want. You're all we want. Holy Spirit, come rest on us. You're all we want. You're all we want. Come on, just lift your voice tonight. Come on, just lift your voice. Come on, just cry out to Him. Come on, all over this place, just lift it up. Come on, let it rise. Let it rise. Just lift up your heart. Lift up your song. Yours 
the power yours is the glory forever amen yours is the kingdom yours is the power yours is the glory forever amen
Come on, come on, just cry out to Him tonight. I just feel in this place. Come on, I just feel we're about to experience a move of His Spirit. Lord, move across this place tonight. Lord, as it promises, it says, foxes have holes, the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay His head. The Spirit searches to and fro across the earth, looking for a place, looking for a people whose hearts are turned to Him. Lord, tonight in Spokane, Washington, we say, God, land right here tonight, God. You are welcome. And Lord, we repent. We repent where people have not made room for you. We repent where leadership has not made room for you. We repent, God, for people that have come with their own agendas. We repent for the spirit of religion. Lord, tonight we ask for a move of your spirit in this region, God. I want to share this verse. We're going to keep worshiping tonight. We're going <laughs> to. We came a long way. We're going to leave it all out here. But I just feel this verse in my spirit over this region. I don't do cookie canned messages. I don't. I don't know what I'm going to say until I feel the Lord speak. And you know, I got up this morning after a really late night in Seattle. I got up at five in the morning and drove to downtown Seattle to jump in a studio to go on Fox and Friends at 6 a.m., which is 9 a.m. Eastern, just for two minutes. Why did I do it? To share a good report. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, I can get as fired up as everyone else with what's happening politically or inflation or the economy or whatever, but I'm like, God, people in America got to know the report of the Lord. And we're living in a season right now where it's like, whose report are you going to believe? Come on, are y'all with me? Whose report are you going to believe? Because I've been to 165 cities across America and I came to bring you a report that God is moving across the nation. I came to bring you a report that the post-COVID church looks different. To be honest with you, growing up, I was a missionary kid. I never really had uh, too big of a heart for America. I didn't really care a ton about America. I traveled the world. I went to hard and dark and persecuted nations. And I, I, I learned a lot from the underground church. And I loved spending my time there. And I, I, I didn't really care much about this nation. And then I had four kids. <laughs> You saw them, all little blondies. We only make one kind. And I had four kids. And the Lord started to stir my heart about what kind of inheritance are we leaving the next generation? What are we going to hand off to the next generation? Because a godly generation hands them off a breakthrough. A godly generation lets their ceiling become the floor of the next generation. And then COVID happened and I had all these international trips planned and I was just excited and I'm in California and gosh, I mean, I grew up in Montana. We hate Californians. <laughs> Y'all are cheering. Isn't it the hilarity of God, you know? I grew up hating Californians and now I'm a Californian going back to Montana I had to change the license plates on my car though to go to Montana you can't go in there with Cali plates not a good idea but when COVID happened I started to say God like what's gonna happen you know California shut down Washington shut down your mayor your your governor Oregon's governor California's governor they're competing for who can be the craziest Strip clubs are essential, bars are essential, marijuana dispensaries are essential, but not the church. And it was almost like the church came into agreement with that judgment. 
They said, okay, you're right, we're not. And I'm out there and I'm getting trolled by the underground church leaders in Saudi Arabia that are texting me. Underground church leaders in Iraq that are texting me. Underground church leaders in Afghanistan, they're saying, Sean, what's happening to California? You're really not gonna listen to those guys, are you? I mean, listen, these are guys, we've done underground church meetings in Riyadh. We've done underground church meetings outside of Mecca. We've done underground church meetings in Erbil at the height of ISIS. These guys know how to roll. And they said, what's going on in America? Don't y'all know you never allow the government to tell you when and how to worship God? And I said, oh yeah, you're right, you're right. I learned a lot from you. So God birthed a movement and, and I got to be honest, when I started seeing across my state, when I started to see first on the Golden Gate Bridge, hundreds of people gather, then on the beaches on Huntington Beach in Orange County, a thousand gathered, then in San Diego, 5,000 people gathered, I started to realize maybe God is using COVID to wake the church up. I'm not saying he caused it. I don't believe he's the author of sickness, but he can use it. And so San Diego, I mean, I was when the light bulb went off, I'm like, these are bougie people here. <laughs> they go to mega churches. They're not about to go out in the hot sun to a battery powered speaker system. And yet there they were rumbling. We started baptizing people in the Pacific Ocean, people are getting freed of drugs, suicide, depression, hopelessness. And then the Lord started speaking to me about another Jesus people movement in my generation. And then we went to Portland. <laughs> Woo! That was something else. 7,000 Christians showed up in Waterfront Park. So many people wanted to get baptized. This is the height of the riding. This is their burning stacks of the Bible and the, on the courthouse steps. No police presence. The feds can't even control the city. And here 7,000 Christians gather and we worship. Revival comes. We start to baptize hundreds of people in the creek, in the, uh, in the river. It's freezing cold too. Then we came up to Seattle. I was like, God, I don't, <laughs> I don't know about Seattle. It's crazy. God moved. Salvation's healing. Satan has showed up. Ended up wine. Satan has showed up trying to pour blood all over us. They end up down at the altar giving their life to Jesus. The same power of the gospel I saw on the mission field, I started to see across the cities of the West Coast. And the Lord began to speak to me and I want to declare this over your state. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care what the statistics say. Washington State belongs to Jesus. There's not a governor. There's not a principality. There's not a power that can come against the calling of God over this region. And I'm telling you, God, he loves to use random places to shock the world. I mean, why didn't he birth Let Us Worship Movement in Texas? They had no restrictions. No, God was like, I'm gonna do it in San Francisco. Matthew 16, I wanna read this over you, verse 13, it says this, Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi. He asked his disciples, who do you say the Son of Man is? Some say, they, re they replied, John the Baptist. Others say, Elijah. You know, on Twitter, there's a bunch of polls, Jesus. They're saying you're this. They're saying you're the nice guy. They're saying, you know, you're the, you're the guy that with tolerance. You're the guy that just love is love is love is love is love. People are saying this. People are saying that. Jesus looks at him. He says, but what about you? Because I'm going to tell you guys, at the end of the day, you're not going to answer to the mob 
You're not going to answer to the cancel culture. You're not going to answer to the trolls. You're going to answer to one man for how you lived your life. This has been the most beautiful journey for us. This has been the most isolating, painful journey. We've lost very good friends. We've lost whatever reputation I thought I had. But you know what? At the end of the day, I don't answer to CCM music. I don't answer to the worship industry. I don't answer to some trolls online. I answer to Jesus. What did you do with what I gave you? And so it says in verse 16, Peter, who, by the way, screwed up a lot. So, I mean, let that just free you today. Peter walked with Jesus for three years and he still was an idiot. It says, Peter said, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus replied, finally, it took long enough. Jesus said, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my father. And I tell you this, because you are releasing the identity of who I am, I'm going to release the identity of who you are. See, this is why boldness and truth is such a big deal. God cannot release identity over a church that doesn't know who God is. When we start declaring the truth of who, he, of who He is to a broken, demonic culture, He will start releasing the truth of who we are. And He says, I tell you, you are Peter. And you're the most coolest, tolerant, skinny jean wearing church around. No, He didn't say that. He said, you're Peter. And on this rock, on this ecclesia, on this ruling body government, I will build my church. And the gates of hell will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Come on, somebody. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. What is my point tonight? This is my point. We got to stop playing games in Spokane, Washington. No more church games. No more. We just want to look like the world. We just want to blend in. We just want to be cool. No, you're weird. You're different. You stick out. People should notice you. You come from a different kingdom. You carry different values. And sure, listen, here's the deal. They're going to call you a bigot. They're going to call you a homophobe. They're going to call you a white nationalist. I get called everything. But you know what? They're going to run out of labels. Because you're none of those things. You are the church of Jesus Christ. And I feel like tonight in Spokane, I feel like that, that tonight of a sense there's a new birthing. And I don't mean this in the sense of we're not starting a church or anything like that. But I feel like God is releasing a fresh fire on the churches here. I've been praying all day, God, let something shift over this region. Let a revival happen like the world's never seen and do it from Spokane, Washington. I believe tonight people that are battling addictions they've never been able to shake are going to find freedom. I believe tonight, people that are struggling with their identity, that don't know who they are, I'm going to tell you tonight, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. People tonight, they don't know. It's like a whole generation is searching for identity. They're searching for meaning. They're searching for truth. And I believe tonight the Lord is coming and He's releasing sonship. He's releasing daughters. He's actually coming and I see Him walking through this place. Reminding you. This is why I think it was such a big deal that in 2020 we actually responded and said, actually, no. We're not just essential. We're not just essential, like a casino is essential. 
or like a hospital is essential. We are the place where the kingdom of God is demonstrated on the earth. And first, I want to deal with fear. Right now is a great time to take an inventory. And if you didn't respond well in 2020, if you responded in fear, or maybe you, maybe you responded and, and you settled back into addictions, maybe you settled back into depression, maybe I don't know what happened in your life. I'm telling you, tonight is a night where we can look back and say, man, I didn't respond like I want to, but guess what? Another test is coming. And tonight I'm getting free. And I don't mean this in like a, like I'm not a negative person, but I'm telling you another test is coming. And tonight God wants to fill us with fire. Come on, we're going to take a minute before we go back into worship. I just want you to lift your hands and I feel like tonight I'm going to get Jay up here. I want to get Pastor Russell up here. We're going to do some. I just feel like tonight God is going to release some things over people. He's going to break off some things from people. I believe tonight is a night that's going to shift the destiny of people in this place. It's going to shift the destiny of Spokane. I'm telling you, God is raising up a church in this region that the gates of hell will not prevail against. Come on, just begin to pray. Come on, begin to pray. Begin to pray. just seek the Lord I want everybody to stand with me can you all stand I want you guys to do me a favor we're gonna create an altar for the Lord can everybody take about 25 steps back under the reverence of God that's that means 25 not five go back push back the rest of you guys you some of you might have to go up the hill that's wonderful this side's doing great you can p move your chair ma'am please just put your chair away perfect keep going middle go back if you guys can pick those chairs up and so nobody trips over them that would be wonderful right here I want everybody to lift your hands right now I want you to start praying right now believing that the fire of God is gonna fall on this altar come on right now just start praying right now start praying right now come on cry out to God cry out to God come on cry out to Jesus Come on, Spokane. Come on, move your lips. Talk to him right now. Cry out to Jesus. Raise your voices. There you go. There you go. Now I want everybody to look at me. Shh. Everybody go shh. In just a moment, I'm going to count to three. And when I do, the fire is going to fall right here. I don't want you to move until I count to three. And as my brothers shared so wonderfully, I'm telling you, I felt this in my spirit for you. Spokane, you need to believe what God believes about you. You guys are like David. Listen to me. David's brothers didn't believe in him. His fathers didn't believe in him. But he believed and God believed in what he had. 
There's an anointing on Spokane that's going to bring revival and reformation. Listen, listen, listen. Don't clap. David couldn't let a giant stop him or a lion or a bear. But here's the truth. With all these people who didn't believe in him, the only thing that took him down is when he stopped fighting. He had an anointing that could slay kings. But when you think about David, you don't think about his fall. You think about him as a mighty king who was after God's heart. I'm going to count to three. And I don't care if your brothers didn't believe in you, if your daddy didn't believe in you. I don't care if you've had leaders that have hurt you. I want you to know tonight, God is just looking for one person who will be after his heart. If you're not in love with Jesus tonight, you can be. If you are in love with Jesus, but you say, Jay, tonight, I want God to see me. I may have failed. I may have been discouraged. But tonight, I'm making it obvious that I am chasing after the heart of God. When I count to three, God is looking for people that are willing to get radical. That means people from the very top all the way from people to the front. I don't care what your neighbor does. I don't care what your church people think of you. If you want to be born again, or you want the fire of God on your life, and you say, God, from this moment on, I'm going to be a warrior, amen. When I count to three, the muse is going to go up super loud. And when I do, you're going to run as fast as you can. I'm not talking about walking pretty. I'm not talking about looking to see what somebody else is doing. I'm talking about running. And you're going to fall on your knees as close to this altar and stay down there and cry out to God saying, I'm after your heart tonight. Are you ready, Spokane? One. Look at me. Two. Three, come on now. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Fall on your knees and cry out to Jesus all over this place. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Jesus, come on. Fall on your knees. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Cry out. Cry out. There's more. Keep coming. There's more. There's more. Jesus, come on. Come on.
in my heart burns it burns for you in my heart burns In my heart right now lift up your hands we're not going anywhere there it is I want everybody to look at Jesus hanging on the cross close your eyes and what every picture you see of him with the blood flowing down from the crown of thorns into his face and into his beard and he's looking right at you and you see the pain from the 39 lashes and you see the nails say this after me right now Jesus tonight I give you my life please forgive me of all of my sins wash me with your precious blood it should have been me dying on the cross but you took my place tonight I ask you to set me free Heal my mind. Heal my life. Heal my emotions. Deliver me tonight. 
in your name I will never say it I will never go back tonight it's over I am not the same I trade it all in I want my heart on fire for you forgive me help me forgive myself here I am I love you I love you I love you I love you you. now here's what I want you to do stay on your knees and just go after him tonight with all of these people here I don't know how we're gonna do it but everybody tonight is part of the ministry team I want all the grandmamas mamas and their own fire because if you stood back there that means that you're on fire to get a step over people and start laying hands on people right now come on from all over this place get to the front don't you don't have to get up man don't worry just let people come to you come on come on all over this place if you love Jesus and you're part of the ministry team tonight come on just get just move to the front find people you can step over people and get down here the rest of you don't go nowhere you need people to lay hands on you tonight come on some of y'all can come through the front all over this place come on come on come on Some of you can lay hands on each other, beside each other, and start praying, asking what what can I pray for you about, and start praying for them. The rest of you, just step over people and find someone. Don't worry, just step over them. They're not going to care. Come on, from all over this place. There's more, there's more. Some of y'all come to the front, just move down here. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. We got a lot of people right here, just step over them. They're going to be fine as long as you don't step on their hands. Don't just stop in the back. Don't just let your come through here, right here. Come on, come on. Come on, we need some folks to get over here. If you love Jesus, come pray for people. Come on, Jesus, move by your spirit, God. 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 Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus come on come on you can step over him don't don't even bother him just step over him step around him come on come on all of y'all just get over in this middle come on Lord we just ask you God mark a generation mark a generation tonight Lord, we pray, God, for revival in the high schools. We pray for revival on the college campuses. God, we pray for revival in the junior high, revival in the youth group. Lord, mark a generation tonight for your glory. We just speak over this generation. They are a consecrated generation. They are a consecrated generation. Shikatarabasa.
Come on. Even if you stand, don't leave. Stay in this moment. I, I feel like God wants to set some people free. Right now. Listen to me for a second. Everybody go, shh. Right now, I feel in my spirit deliverance is about to take place. But I need you to help me out. I need you to be honest. If you've been having opposition in your life, I don't care if it's addictions. We're going to do baptisms afterwards. Afterwards. At the end of the night. If you, look at me. Everybody go, shh. If you have issues that's been opposing your mind, fear, addictions, I don't care what they are. This is a shame-free zone. Nobody's leaving here in bondage. As a pastor in California, I want to apologize if we didn't make you feel safe as a church. Today, you're safe. If you got stuff you need to be free from, lift your hands right now. Lay hands on each other, each other right now, each other. Lay, lay hands on each other right now. Come on, you see somebody with their hands lifted up. I want everybody to say this after me right now with authority. This ain't some pretty little nothing. We're going to destroy hell right now. Say this after me. Are you ready? Say this after me. Say, tonight, Jesus is here. Tonight, I am free. Say, devil, devil, I bind you. Let go of my life, of my mind. Jesus rebukes you. Get out of my life. Get away from my family. Get away from my thoughts. All addictions are broken by the blood. Fear go. Fear go. Depression go. Depression, so. Suicide, go. Suicide go. In Jesus name. Jesus name. Pornography. Pornography. You got to go. go. In Jesus name. Jesus name. I, am I am pure. I am loved. I am free. I am free. I am free. I am free. Shout it out. Come on. Now look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Listen to me. I don't care if it's one year or 20 years. I don't care if it's vape pens. I don't care if it's marijuana. You can't be a revivalist in bondage. You have no authority to set anybody free when you're in bondage. And tonight, the revivalists that are here are not the religious folks. It's the one that chases Jesus down and says, have mercy on me. Tonight, if you want that mercy, even if you've been in bondage to cigarettes for 20 years, I've seen grandmamas throw a pack of cigarettes on the stage and get set free. If there's anything in your pocket that's not of God, even if you're in the back or you're here, I want you to come as quickly as you can throughout the night and throw it on this stage. You be the first person to say, I'm a real leader. I'm no longer going to live in bondage. Come on, throw it, throw it. Let's go. Come on, shout for him. Come on. There's more. Who else wants to be free? Who else wants to be delivered? Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. The enemy's been defeated. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Drugs, marijuana, cocaine. Come on. Come on, there's more. Come on. There's more. There we go. Come on. There's prescription drugs. Xanax. 
Williams, Percocets, marijuana, get rid of it. Listen, there's somebody here that you've defended. You have defended marijuana. You said, oh, well, God grew it. It's from God. Listen to me. There's only one thing legal in heaven, and that's the blood of Jesus Christ. And if you're not sick with cancer, this is an addiction. There we go. Get rid of it. Boom. There we go. I'm proud of you, man. There's people here with marijuana last night. There, come on, let's go. Let's go. Who else? You've been defending it. You want to be free. You don't even want to pay for it no more. There we go. Y'all are hitting Sean Foy with drugs. Come on. There's people here with prescription drugs because you say, I can't, I can't sleep without it. I want you to know, no, 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 no. You can rest in the Lamb of God. But I want you to get rid of it tonight. One more thing. I feel it in my spirit. We're about to destroy hell. Look, y'all ready? Listen to me. The Bible says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. There are people here. It may look different than mine. But I want you to know God can set you free. And the way he's going to set you free is when you don't carry shame. And sometimes church makes us feel shame. If you've battled with same sex attraction and you want to be free, I want you to know tonight is your night. And the church, we love you. We want to call on your life. Then hell will not stop. But I want you to be honest. And I'm going to show you how all that shame is going to leave. Because we're going to celebrate your boldness. If you've battled with this, male, female, old or young, when I count to three, don't be ashamed. Lift your hands up. One, everybody put your hands down. Two, three, lift your hands if that's you. Jesus. Jesus. Now listen, hold them up high. Hold them up high. Y'all see those hands? Everybody get around them and hug them the way a father would a child. Hug them right now. Hug them right now. Hug them. Hug them. Get around them. Get around them. Hug them. Hug them. Hug them and tell them how much God loves them. Come on. Come on, pray the love of God over them. Hug them. Don't stop hugging them. Don't stop. We're not stopping. We're not stopping. Come on. I want everybody to say this after me. Say, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. God created me. He set me apart to speak to nations. All the lies are gone. Perversion. Get out of my life. In Jesus' name. I am who he says he, I am. I am free. Because he says I'm free. And he loves me. He loves me. He loves me. He loves me. Now keep hugging him. I'm going to count to three. And when I do, you are not going to ask permission because shame is about to leave these people. When I count to three, you're going to pick them up like a coach who just won the Super Bowl and hold them up high, and we're all going to celebrate. One, two, three. Pick them up. 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 Celebrate them. Celebrate them. Pick them up. Shout it out. You're free. You're free! You're free! You're free! Come on! Hold them up! Shout! Keep shouting! Keep shouting! Keep shouting! Hey! Come on! Hold them up! Don't let go! I know they're heavy, but hold them! Hold them. Don't let go, don't let go. Close your eyes, keep them up. This is 
what the Lord says. Hold them up. Don't let go. Y'all stronger than that. Y'all got 20 people. Shh. I want to pray this over them. Close your eyes. I hear the Lord saying, for the enemies came like a threat because of the calling that I have on you, says the Lord. For I'm the one that gave birth to you in your mother's womb. I'm the one that sent you down with a significant calling from heaven. For the Lord says there's been an attack on your life because of the threat that I've called you to walk in in 2022. For I will raise up a new generation that will counsel what this enemy has tried to counsel against the church. For you will be a voice that comes to destroy every troll, every lie, every woke spirit that says no. Jesus can set us free. I am set free. I am saved. For the Lord says I've called you to be pure, to be holy, and I will give you your dreams and desires. Don't wait says the Lord. Don't wait. He says, go, 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 go. Come on, give him a shout. Hey. Jesus, Jesus. Put them down now. <laughs> Don't worry, bro. They can't pick me up either. I'm a little chunky. Hey, look at me. There's so much more to come. There's about to be a baptism of fire. How many of you guys want that fresh fire? My brother Russ is going to come up here and it's going to get crazy. Now look at me for just a moment. Everybody goes, shh. I know I do that all the time. It's great. I wish my kids would listen when I do that, but listen, here's what I want to do right now. There we go. There's more. Man, some of y'all need to quit smoking. Y'all smoke cheap cigarettes. That's when you know you need freedom. There we go. Look at me. Everybody look at me for just a moment. All the mamas and papas, look at me. I was telling the pastor earlier who really supported us, Pastor Matt, to, to come here and Gavin, that over the past year, we've went to all these cities like Chicago and Detroit. And, you know, those places, man, they don't have cool churches. You guys had like a gazillion pastors up here. There, it's just broken people and a few pastors that are trying. But we go in by faith. We say, God, You'll provide for us. And really, Let Us Worship wasn't built in places like this. It was built in the raw streets of America. And we're not slowing down. We're just getting started. How many of you guys believe that this is what the new church is going to look like? I, I even believe that these pastors that were here tonight that they're going to come back together and do meetings. Because I feel like God's going to unite the city. This is what it's going to be like the crazy dome church. But here's the thing. When I was driving through the city, I saw poverty. And in this next season, the church has to be the answer. The same way we got to learn from our mistakes in the pandemic, we got to learn from our mistakes in this recession. And we got to trust God. And without revival, we're done. How many of you guys want revival? Well, tonight, we got we to gotta lay a sacrifice, man. When you want something, it can't just be a thought. It can't just be 
a show up to a church, you got to lay it all down. We've laid it all down and we've seen it. But tonight, I'm going to give you an opportunity just to give a sacrifice to the Lord. You say, Jay, how can I do that? You can do it by saying, God, I don't have much. Or some of you might have a lot. But I want to change America with what I have. I'm giving it to you. I can't trust in the government. I can't trust in man. I can't even trust in the banks. The value of the dollar is going down. But can I tell you, heaven's going up. Where is your faith, church? If it's in the Lord, I want you to pull out your phones right now all across this place. Pull your phones out. Pull your phones out. Now, even if you don't want to do it, at least fake it and pull your phone out so that your neighbor thinks you're a Christian. I'm just joking. Just joking. Don't get mad. Some of y'all, that religious spirit's coming out. Pull your phones out. We're going to put something on the screen, but I'm going to tell it to you. Everybody say this number. Here's the number. Say 77977. Say it. Say it one more time. 77977. Now text, let us worship. Everybody say, let us worship. One more time. Let us worship. You can do that with one word, no spaces, to let it text, let us worship to 77977. The second way you can give is on Venmo. Everybody say Venmo. Say it one more time. Venmo. Search for let us worship on Venmo. Just type in let us worship. One word, no spaces. Let us worship. The third way you can give is by check. Uh, you can write your check out to Sean Foyt Ministries, or I'll make it easy on you. S is in Sean, F is in Foyt, M is in Ministries, SFM. Write a check to SFM, okay? Lastly, I know that there's some people from Ukraine and Russia that don't trust the government. You got all your cash in your pocket. Just joking. He's like, yeah, that's me. <laughs> if that's you, you can take your check or you can take your cash and we're going to have some ushers. Where are my ushers at? Where are you guys at? I don't see you. Can y'all hold your buckets up? Huh? Where are you guys? Can y'all hold the bucket? No, that ain't, that ain't a bucket, brother. That's why I need them. Where's the usher so I can see their buckets? Hold, I, I got to anoint those, but people are already holding their hats up like I'm an usher. No, you're not. Hold that. Y'all see that black bucket? Where are the black bucket? See the black buckets right here? Hold them up high. Stop. Hey, guys, hold them up so they can see it. You can put your cash or you can put your checks in these buckets. I need some of y'all to come down here to the front. Okay, here's a bucket. I need some of y'all to Hey, here's the buckets. Put them in the buckets. But I want y'all to say this after me. Ushers, just give me a second. Give me a second, ushers. Stop, 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 stop moving. Everybody say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight, here's my offering. I'm going to obey your word. Here's my offering. Bring revival to my city, to my life. Here it is. I trust in you, in Jesus' name, amen. Now listen to me, I want you to give right now, because if you go home, the devil will talk you out of what God told you. I want you to do it under the anointing, amen, ushers go for it. Do it under the anointing, the Bible says, in his riches and glory, meaning when you give under the glory, I believe God blesses that, are you with me? Are you with me, amen? We're, we're not stopping, but I want to make another announcement because we're going to go back into worship and I'm not going to do more announcements. But I kill announcements, anointed announcements, anointments. We have a bunch of merch here that we don't want to take to Montana. This is the best thing you can buy for your life because it's like a bulletproof vest. You wear this anywhere, people know. That's one of them real ones right there. You know what I mean? So get the merch. Also, there's books in the back. Sean's new book. And also, we have our new movie. Everybody say Super Spreader. It's coming out in theaters. And we're going to get all your pastors to get theaters, to have it in your region so you guys can take friends. September 29th. Everybody say September 29th. It's an incredible documentary on the story of Let Us Worship in 500 theaters around America. Amen? 
Come on. How many of you guys want to worship some more? Come on. There's a, there's a beautiful little girl, Aubrey. She's three years old. She's lost her mom. She's over here. I'm probably going to take her home tonight if her mom doesn't come. Just kidding. She's really, really cute. So if you're missing your daughter, we got her right over here. And uh, y'all ready to dance? Come on, y'all ready to dance? So, um, so I used to sing this song in youth group, and uh, I feel like it's time to bring it back. And open up the doors and let the music play. Let the streets resound with singing. In songs that bring your hope, in songs that bring your joy, dancers who dance upon injustice. Hey, listen, I want to say this before we go. Share stories tonight of what God's doing. Let's fill social media with the sound of revival, with pictures of revival, with testimonies. Fill TikTok, fill Twitter. Tell everybody God's moving in Spokane. And join us on the National Mall in Washington, D.C. on October 22nd. We're gonna worship, it's gonna be fun. All right, y'all ready? Where's my kids? Come on, y'all come up here, join me. Here we go, here we go.
normal, just a kick, just a kick. Actually, speed it up just a little bit. All right, this is what I want you all to do. I want you to get your phone out and turn your light on. Come on, we're gonna declare something tonight. A little bit faster. Gonna keep my flame burning bright, burning bright, yeah. Gonna keep my flame burning bright, burning bright, yeah. Come on, gonna keep my flame burning bright, burning bright, yeah. Gonna keep my flame burning bright, burning bright, yeah. Come on, gonna keep my flame burning bright, burning bright, yeah. Gonna keep my flame <laughs> burning bright, burning bright, yeah. Gonna keep my flame burning bright, burning bright, yeah. Gonna keep my, come on, just the drum. Come on, lift it up, come on. Oh, gonna keep my flame burning bright, burning bright, yeah. Gonna keep my flame burning bright, burning bright, yeah. Gonna keep my flame burning. Come on, we're gonna dance together. Here we go, one, two, one, two, three, yeah. on your life. Come on, friend, in the book of Acts and in chapter 2, Jesus speaking to his disciples, he says, you go wait in Jerusalem. You will be endued with power from on high for the mission that's at hand. The Bible records in Acts 2 that about 120 gathered together and they begin to pray in that upper room in Jerusalem. And for three days they tarried, which means they waited. And all of a sudden, in the middle of the night, there was a wind that began to blow in the room. And they thought to themselves, surely this must be that promised spirit that Jesus spoke of. The Bible says the disciples began to look around and they seen flames sitting on the disciples' heads. And they thought this must be what he has spoken about, the power that comes from on high. And pretty soon the Bible said they begin to speak in an unknown language. And the crowds gathered below and said, these men must be drunk. And Peter gets up and preaches on what now is known as the day of Pentecost. And he says, friend, these men are not drunk as you suppose. No, they have been baptized in fire by the Holy Ghost. And Fred, 2,000 years later, the church is still in need of a baptism in the Holy Ghost. And I'm telling you today, there is still a flame that has your name on it. And it comes from above. And it endues you with power from on high to do the mission at hand. Come on, no longer will we operate in powerless Christianity. The kingdom of God is not an observation, friend. It's in participation. There has never been a greater hour for you to be alive. It is the high call of God for this very moment that you would experience Him in real life, that your life would be transformed, that your mind would be renewed. Come on, friend, it's time to allow the courage that comes from God to be the most contagious thing in Spokane. Come on, we believe in the fresh fire of Pentecost. Come on, I am unashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
It is the power of God unto salvation, first for the Jew and then for the Gentile. Come on, friend. We're just believing tonight for God to do something fresh and new in your life. Come on, you might be here tonight. You say, Pastor, I've been following Jesus my whole life. You might got a Bible autographed by Moses. I'm not sure. But I'm here to tell you tonight, friend, there's more for you. There's more for you. There's more for you. The Spirit of God is like a wind that blows on the sails of our life. It drives us in the direction that we should go. And all I know is that Scripture says that anything that is not from faith is sin. That without faith, it's impossible to please God. And I'm going to ask you in just a moment tonight to use your faith. To begin to call on the God who still answers by fire and believe for something fresh and new in your life. Come on, I believe so sovereignly you can leave this place baptized in God's spirit, overflowing with God's power. Come on, you need power to pull down strongholds. You need power to confront the kingdom of darkness. You need power to see revival and reformation. You need the power of God alive and active in fresh and new ways in your life. It's always a good time to get filled to overflowing. And he who believes can receive. And out of his innermost being would flow rivers of living water. And these things Jesus spoke concerning the Holy Spirit who had not yet been given. But I got good news. The Holy Spirit has now been given. And he's only one ask away. The Bible says, ask, seek, and knock. And the door will be opened unto you. Jesus spoke these things concerning the Holy Spirit. If an evil father knows how to give good gifts to his son, how much more does the heavenly father know how to give unto us? Oh friend, he the father of light. In him there is no shadow of turning. Every good and perfect gift come from the father above. No, he's not mad at you. He is madly in love with you and desiring to pour out his spirit on your life. And so we're going to add our faith together, me and you. I believe God's no respecter of persons. If he did it back then, he can do it today. And we're just going to use our faith because it's the only thing that we got left. And we're going to call on the baptizer of heaven. His name is Jesus. And we're going to ask for a fresh outpouring, even in this field tonight, that God would visit us with that fresh fire. Come on, would you just as a sign of faith, stretch your hands towards heaven. Father, now we call in the mighty name of Jesus. We confess that you are the only hope for our nation. You're the only hope for our region. And we're asking you one more time to pour out your spirit without measure. The same fire that fell on Pentecost, God, would it fall on us today? Would tongues of fire sit on the head, heads of men and women? Would the wind of your spirit blow across this region? God, would you cause dead things to come alive? I thank you that you're still walking through graveyards. You're still walking through the tombstones. You're still walking through the dead, dry bone valleys. And it's simply our time to wake up. Wake up for the King of Glory is here. Wake up for your salvation draws near. Wake up for this Jesus is worthy of all adoration and praise, both now and forever. Come on, the Bible says that it's His eyes that burn like fire. And God, we ask tonight that those blazing eyes would look in the direction of Spokane and pour out your spirit once again. Come on, in just a moment, I'm going to count to three. And I'm going to ask you to do something tonight. When I count to three, I'm, I'm going to ask you to begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. You might be here tonight, you say, Pastor, I haven't yet received my heavenly prayer language. I got good news. Tonight is your night. Friend, tonight is your night. When I count to three, I'm going to begin to pray in my spiritual language. I'm going to ask our intercessors, our team, our friends, our family, would you begin to pray in your spiritual prayer language? And if you've been asking God, and if you've been contending with the Father, if you got faith in your heart tonight, friend, there's no reason you can't receive as well. Come on, can we turn this place into another upper room experience? Can we turn this grass field into another Pentecost experience? Come on, could you get baptized afresh and anew? Could we just say, God, do it one more time? Do it again in my life. 
do it again in my family do it again in my generation God one more time would the God of Elijah respond with fire would the God who has never failed and won't start now do something fresh and new in my life come on could we call on heaven tonight and just say God remember your covenant remember your people and just do it one more time here we go one here we go two here we go one two three come on let's pray in the holy ghost there it is there it is there it is more 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 god pour it out Come on, Come on, lift those hands. This is what heaven sounds like. Come on, just pray in the spirit as loud as you can. Come on. Come on, raise those voices. Come on. Come on, tongues of fire. Tongues of fire. Some of you are getting filled with the Holy Ghost. I feel there's somebody here named Isaiah. The Lord says to you, here I am. And you're saying, here I am, God. He's about to light you on fire. Send me, God. Is that him? <laughs> That's him? Come on, lift up your hands, boy. Lift them up. You about to get marked forever right now. Don't, don't, don't hold him up. Let the power just hit him. Father, I pray for the fire of God to fall on him right now. Hit him right now with your spirit, God. Come on, just pray in the Holy Spirit over him. I want one of y'all to touch his chest right now. Touch his chest. Touch his chest. Put your hand on his chest. Just take it right there. Glory. The anointing of the Holy Ghost. Fall on him right now in Jesus' name. Fill him with fire. You're feeling fire run through your bones right now. I'm telling you, man. God is touching you, boy. Let that fire just fall on him right now. Loose that tongue in the Holy Ghost. There it is. Come on, Isaiah, look at me, man. <laughs> Y'all can let go of him now. Hey, look at me. I don't care what the report says from the world or from your family, from your past. Believe the report of the Lord. You'll do youth ministry. You'll be anointed by God. I'm telling you right now, neighborhoods and schools will be set on fire because of your life. Run as fast as you can. And stay away from any trap of the enemy. Are you with me? <laughs> you feel that? Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. <laughs> With my life laid down, surrendered now, I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Listen, I want to sing this before we go over the city. And I, I, just, I just feel like the Lord is saying, stop crying.
cursing your city. Out of the same mouth can't come blessing and curses. We, you know that there's a drug issue, there's a homelessness issue, there's all kinds of issues, but stop cursing your city. Speak life over your city. Speak hope over your city. Speak destiny over your city. Speak, speak, speak the Word of God over your city. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails. Come on, sing it with me. All my days I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up <laughs> until I lay my head, and I will sing of the goodness of God. Come on, sing all my life. All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I have made I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice I love your voice Oh, you led me through the fire In darkest nights You were close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend And I have lived in the goodness of God Come on, sing all my life. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am made, then I will sing of the goodness of God. Come on, sing your goodness, yeah. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after. all my life and all my life you have been faithful all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able and I will see of the goodness of God You have been faithful All my life You have been so, so good With every breath that I am made And I will sing of the goodness of God This is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, surrender. 
Listen, we don't, we don't play games with Let Us Worship. Like, we go all in. Some of y'all think we about to finish. No, 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 no. Uh-uh. This is a new church. <laughs> Some of the mamas in the back going, boy. <laughs> it's okay. Y'all at least got comfortable grass. This ain't parking lots. Hey, listen, look how beautiful that is. Isn't that cool? I, I really feel like tonight miracles are about to break out. And before I, I turn it over to pastor to pray for miracles, listen to me. How many of you guys ever seen a real miracle? I want to say this because we also want to commission. Listen to me. If you got wrecked by the Lord tonight, I don't care if you got baptized when you were younger. I was baptized twice because there was a season where I just needed to really rededicate everything. And what a perfect hot night to get baptized. I might get do it again. I, mean, I don't know. I'm just. <laughs> but tonight, I want to get some radical folks who said, you know what? I'm, I got wrecked tonight. I'm going under that water, leaving the pandemic under the water and coming out as a revivalist. So we are going to open up the baptisms. But while we do that, we're going to let Pastor Matt here. He's going to pray over miracles in your body. And tonight you're going to get healed. Come on. So John G. Lake, back in the 1930s, made Spokane, because God was moving through him, the healthiest city in the world. Tonight, that starts again. Amen? Now, Jesus paid for it already on the cross. He already sees you healed. He already sees you healed right now. Now, what he sees in heaven, let's receive it right now here on earth. Amen? So right now, if you've got any pain in your body, I want you to raise your hand right now. And if you're right near those people that are raising their hand, I want you to lay hands on them right now. Lay hands on them. Be the body of Christ. Lay hands on them. Lord God, you paid for it on the cross. By your blood, we are healed. And Lord, right now, we receive that healing power. Somebody's got left knee pain that is healed right now in Jesus' name. Somebody's been struggling with back pain for over 20 years that's healed right now in Jesus' mighty name. Some of you are struggling with impossible diseases. That's a bad report. We don't believe that. We renounce that right now in Jesus' name. There's a good report now. There's a good report being released over you right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I want you just to pray for you. Those people right now you're laying hands on, just receive it right now. There's somebody, actually there's a whole bunch of people out there that need emotional healing right now. I want you to see the face of Jesus Christ. I want you to see Him coming in right now and healing every wound in your heart. Especially the wound from the church where church leaders have wounded you I want you to see him healing that right now in Jesus name receive that right now in Jesus name and right now as you're praying for people if you're not praying for somebody I want you to extend your hand up front we got somebody that needs a miracle right now and we just thank you Jesus that you are the author of life you are the author of life. And we release your healing power into her right now, into her whole body right now in Jesus' name. Into her whole body right now in Jesus' name. In, into her emotions right now, Lord. Let all that pain go in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We just declare a miracle tonight, right now. Right now in Jesus' name. Nothing is impossible with Christ. Nothing is impossible with Jesus. 
I want you to say that. Nothing is impossible with Jesus. Nothing is impossible with Jesus. Nothing is impossible with Jesus. Now right now, you still have your hands up right now. Just say, Jesus, I receive your healing. By your stripes, I am healed. Amen. 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 Now, there's somebody out there right now that's been in a car wreck. I, I, I'm going to go there right now. Whoever that is, I want you to raise your hand right now. You've been struggling. Right. Okay. We were here and here. I want you to lay hands on these people right now. Right now. Right now, Lord Jesus, we thank you for healing them. We thank you for miraculous healing over them right now. They are totally whole. All sinew, all bones be in the right order, all nerves be in the right order, all pain be gone right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Right now. Holy Spirit, we thank you for just coming on them right now in a special way. They're being blessed right now. Being blessed right now. Being blessed right now. Come on, somebody shout out to the Lord right now. Just let it go. You don't have to hold on to that anymore. Just let it go. Just let it go. Just let it go. And right now, I want you to lift your voices up in the spirit right now. I want you to lift your voices up in the spirit right now. Right now. Right now. In unity, all these churches here tonight, lift up your voice in the spirit right now. In agreement tonight, right now, on the count of three, we are going to declare Spokane healed. We're going to declare Spokane healed. Right now, number one. Lord God, we thank you for the blood of your son, Jesus Christ, over Spokane, Washington right now. Two. Get ready to shout. I'm telling you, we want all of downtown Spokane wondering what is going on at the pavilion tonight. Amen? Right? On the count of three, we declare Spokane healed. Three, Spokane, you are healed in Jesus' name. Jesus. Jesus. Can we do something crazy in closing? Will y'all do something crazy with me? I, I just felt it in my spirit. We've only done this a few times, and it really did something. I, 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 listen, when you go to different cities the way we do, um, you kind of just learn how to be sensitive to there's always different stuff in different places, right? And, and there really is an anointing here that I think the pastors of this city are going to come together, and y'all are going to have big kingdom meetings right here. Y'all want that? Will y'all support your pastors? Listen, we saw this where we, we came in and started a fire and pastors started like hosting revival and they would go to different churches and they would all rotate in different churches and bring revival to different churches. But I feel like there's something about this specific place. Would y'all join me? Can we do something? 
everybody, can we all just get on our knees together and put our hands on the ground? I know it's weird, but I'm weird. I've, I've been weird. I came out my mama weird. My wife thinks I'm weird. And if you can, it's okay if, if it's not easy for you. Can we touch the ground? Say this with me. Say, Lord Jesus, we have been standing on holy ground right now as a sign of faith we're going to strike the ground we're going to see a, a double portion on our lives revival in Spokane in Jesus name now we're going to do three strikes together on the ground are you ready we're going to fake it but it's got it's not really fake like don't hit the ground and bust your hand up you ready? Hold it up your hand like this. One. Strike the ground. Bam! Y'all say bam with me. Some of y'all hit the concrete. Y'all no, crazy. I mean, the Lord tells you, but... Y'all ready? That was a warm-up. We're going to do three times. We're going to say strike the ground. Here we go. One, two, three. Strike the ground! One more time. Strike the ground! Now we're going to do one more. We're going to strike the ground, and we're going to get up and stand on holy ground. Are you ready? Get your feet ready. Now I want everybody to shout, strike the ground. Here we go. One, two, three. Shout it out, yeah! Jesus! All right, let's go. Let's close like this one more time. Grab, grab the hand of the person beside you. Now, if you don't have any money and you want to buy merch, ask the person beside you. <laughs> Tonight's the night of blessing. Hey, how many of you guys want to see the movie Super Spreader? It's, it's awesome, man. You guys are going to love it. All right, grab their hand. After it's over, make sure you buy all the merch. Hey, listen, before, hold their hands. I know it's sweaty, but it's okay. Who cares? Germs are good. I want to honor the production team. These guys, they're from Ukraine and Russia. Now, listen. Anybody from Ukraine or Russia? Come on. I got you. They're the reason why we do let us worship. Because when nobody had our back in the Pacific Northwest, they put all their sound on the line and said, we'll fight for this country. Pastors, leaders, if y'all want to do events here, bring these guys. They're the real pioneers. And we love you guys so much. The whole team, we love y'all, man. Y'all are real warriors. Hold their hands. Now, another thing, keep up with us on Instagram. Amen. Amen. Follow Sean. Follow Let Us Worship. Follow Hold the Line. Are you with me? <laughs> Let's pray. Huh? Oh, thank you, man. Did you guys have fun? Can we, can we come back? Some of y'all have been holding hands a long time. Now, if you, if you like the person you're holding their hand, this is your moment. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> some of y'all just got mad because somebody looked at you like, what's happening? <laughs> Don't be mad. You got to forgive me. <laughs> Say, I forgive you, Jay. <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's pray. Father, only you could do what happened tonight. And you've blessed us with so much tonight as a, your body. And as we came, as Paul says, to bring gifts to these people, they've brought a bigger gift to us, a gift of love, encouragement, and blessing. God, I pray, as you've redug the well tonight, that this, there will be rivers flowing in this region, overflowing, God, 
the flowing from the temple where people are just swimming in the river of the Holy Spirit. Resurrect dreams of the church tonight and bless this place. Bless this land. Turn those cities that are in ruins, the buildings that are in ruins, even the Catholic buildings, let them get saved. Let them get filled with the Holy Spirit. Birth revival in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. <laughs> I love y'all so much. My name's Jay. God bless you guys. Yeah.